Hi there, this is Anna from Anna Aspinus Designs. I'm back with a brand new video. I am going to be showing you the new Artplay Vanish collection and deconstructing this layout by one of our team members, Laura. And the main focus on this session is going to be using the digital art supplies with the blending modes in Adobe Photoshop and Elements. And you'll notice today I'm working in Adobe Photoshop Elements. This is because this is the program that Laura uses to create her pages. And I thought it'd be fun to switch it up um, just to show a different view of the way you can use the products by Anna Aspinus Designs. Before we get started with the deconstruction, I am going to head into my digital art supplies folder and you'll see that I have placed all five products included with the Art Play palette, a vanished collection into a single folder. So the actual Art Play palette is delivered in two different subfolders, and within that you have a brushes, elements and papers folder. And if we go ahead and go into there, you can see that there are a variety of different brushes that you can use with the paintbrush tool in Photoshop and Elements to embellish your pages. So there's lots of textures in this one, some lace textures and, and tape. Uh, there's some cool mixed media style textures, a couple of blending brushes, which are always useful. And in this particular palette, we also have a number of different edges as well that you can use to create your own edge overlays. So moving back into the elements, we have a variety of layered elements in PSD and PNG format, as well as the single layer elements. And this, of course, gives you the flexibility to adjust drop shadows and apply your own. So if we go in, you can see the camera element that's been used in this page by Laura, as well as this fun foliage element, which was actually created by one of my customers and gifted to me. So let's head back into the papery. And of course you are used to the fact that I create a number of different artsy papers. And this particular palette was inspired by a request from one of our other team members, Adrienne. She wanted to have a beachy style kit that had neutral tones and having been dreaming about my recent getaway to California, I was more than happy to create another beach style kit. And this is really a kit that's about the idea of preserving memories, of memories not fading away. It would also work really well with heritage and ancestry pages. So we have the fourth paper and then a number of solid papers that you can then use the transfers and overlays to create your own custom designs. So let's go ahead. I really like this gold transfer here. There's a number of different gold transfers in this particular collection, as well as some mixed media and some watercolor style paint. So lots of fun to be had with those different transfers to create your own compositions. And then to go with that art play palette, we have a template which allows you simply to add a background and add in your photos, potentially add a blended photo to this template by using the watercolor photo blends which are delivered in two different formats. You have the one layer PNG format as well as the multiple layered PSD and that allows you to then just clip your image to the photo blends layer and then be able to manipulate these stain layers independently from the photo. We also have these fun sea sprinkles which were also inspired by Adrienne and these are delivered in both PNG and PSD formats so that you can move around all of these different shell splatter and element layers independently from one another. You could also change the color as well as the depth of the shadows. And then we also have a word art selection which has a beaded threads, a number of different word art titles, as well as the word transfer elements, and then some wooden words that you can also add. So that is the collection that we're going to be using. 
Laura has used the word art mix and the art play palette as well as the sea sprinkles that she hasn't used the photo blends, clipping masks or the template in this particular case. But if you look on the other videos on this channel, then you'll see that there are a couple of other videos that look at working with templates and with working with the photo blends, clipping masks in Adobe Photoshop and elements. So let's go ahead and head back to our layout. This is the finished layout. I'm gonna go ahead and close this down and then look at the foundation of this page. And you can see in the layers panel that she has created a new layout and then added the artsy paper number three from the art play palette, Vanish. So this was the foundation for her page. It's always helpful to start with an artsy background because it avoids that terror of starting with a completely blank canvas. From here, she decided to customize her artsy paper by adding a number of different transfers to her artsy paper. If I go ahead and open up that group, you can see that we have multiple different layers. The first one is actually an element and she has enlarged the size of this element to create a much larger transfer on her page. Now ordinarily I would not recommend doing this because of course when you enlarge an image that's made of pixels it's going to stretch those pixels and cause some blurriness in your image but because she went ahead and applied a linear burn blending mode then that's going to minimize the pixelation that that occurs in her page. And one of the great things about an artsy style of scrapbooking or this artistry is that sometimes the blur or the pixelation can add to the charm of the piece. And then she added in the foliage element that I was telling you about earlier that one of my customers, Paul, gifted to me. And you can see that she hasn't used it in a conventional sense. That would be to add a drop shadow layer style. Instead, she's gone ahead and added a color burn blending mode. And this allows the element to blend quite nicely into the background or her foundation and add some visual interest in terms of both color and depth. And then finally, she's gone ahead and added two different transfers. So she added this tape transfer in the background here, and she added a multiply blending mode. So if I go ahead and place that to normal, you can see what it would look like without the blending mode. And then we can go ahead and apply that multiply blending mode. And then finally, she added a splatter overlay to complete the effect. We're going to skip the next couple of groups of layers, which are the photo glows, blue brushes, and sea sprinkles, and start with this photo group of layers. So if I turn on that group of layers, you can see that she has three copies of the same photo and she's used a layer mask with brushes to blend that photo so that the peer part of the image looks like it's coming out of the camera which is a really neat effect and notice how the edges of the peer line up with these texture layers in the foundation of her page from here she then went and added in another set of transfers. So where these previous transfers were placed below her photo, the next lot of transfers were placed on top of her image. And you can see that there are three different transfers that she's brought into her page. So we have this large transfer here with a multiply blending mode added. Again, if I go ahead and place that back to normal, you can see the effect it has a little bit more depth to the page when you start adding blending modes to your compositions. The next one is a simple gold paint transfer with the blending mode set to normal. And then we have another transfer which adds some really nice texture through the image and the peer part of her photo. And again, that blending mode is set to multiply she then started the process of adding in some light and some embellishment to our to her layout. So let's start with the photo glows. These are all photo glows from the number two set in the category of photo glows in the Anna Aspinus Design Store. And I, of course, will link to all these products below this video. 
Let's go ahead and turn these on and she's used a variety of different photo glows. If you look in our layers panel, there's a lot of different photo glows that she's added and they all serve to add light and depth of color to her layout. Having switched off the visibility of all of these photo glow layers, we can now start switching them back on so that you can see how they inject light into the composition. So the first one has minimal impact, but together when you add all of these layers together, they then form the effect. So you'll notice up at the top of the layers panel, if you keep an eye on this box, it'll show you the blending mode that she has applied to each layer. So that one's a soft light. The next one is a normal blending mode. And then you can see we have a, another one added at vivid light. And if you look at the layer thumbs, you can see that they vary in color from blue to white. To yellow and pink. So I'm going to quickly go up through these and you can notice how each one of these layers have an impact on the actual finished piece. And I'm going through and you'll notice that most of them are either soft light, vivid light or hard light. And you also have the option to, to be able to change the opacity. Laura hasn't actually done this in this particular case, but if you wanted to change the opacity, you'd simply just bring down this lever and that will soften the impact of any of these photo glows. So again, we have another one at Vivid Light. Vivid Light tends to be my favorite blending mode to apply to these different photo glow layers. And then the last one there like that. So if I go ahead and turn this off, then you can see the effect that this all has together. And if I were to take one of these vivid light blending modes and place it back to normal, you could see it simply just has the effect of adding some simple color over the top of the photo. So moving on from our photo glow, she then added some blue brushes and she has added color to her page and some subtle light by adding blending modes to brushes. If I go ahead and open up this particular group of images, you can see the actual shape of the brush is not too important because of the blending mode applied. In this case, she has an overlay blending mode with an opacity of 46%. So if I go ahead and take that to normal and then I increase the opacity to 100, you can see what that brush looks like. It's a small kind of stain brush. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring that roughly back down to where it was before and apply the soft light blending mode and then move on to the second page. And this is so subtle that we can barely see it. With a normal blending mode and the opacity at 27, if I bring that up, you can now see that it's another stain brush and you can bring that down. And notice by bringing that lever down how you can control how subtle that brushwork appears. There doesn't appear to be any effect with this particular layer, so I don't even think that there is a brush on this one. So I'm going to move on to the next one. And again, if we go up to the layers panel and look at that opacity slider, you can see that it is another subtle blue stain with an overlay blending mode applied this time. So that would be the blue brushes. So we've added all of the brushwork and photo glows to add light and color to our page. And now she has moved on to adding the embellishments. And so she's added those in the form of, first of all, the sea sprinkles. So let's go ahead and turn on this group of layers. And you can see that there are three different layers in this group and they're very dark, much darker and much more intense in terms of their color and contrast than the ones I showed you in the Sea Sprinkles folder. And this is because she has three different layers and on each of those layers, she has applied a different blending mode. So the first one is her foundational blending mode and it's quite soft because remember, it's being placed behind these transfer layers that are further up in the layers stack. She's then added a duplicate copy of that layer and it looks like she used the PNG version of the element and she applied a color burn blending mode. 
So let me go ahead and take that to a normal so that you can see the difference. So it really does add a lot of contrast and a lot of depth of color to her page. Those browns become reds when you go ahead and add those color burn blending modes and also some yellows in there as well. And then she repeated that process one more time by adding a second copy of that sea sprinkles layer and adding a color burn blending mode. She then moved on to adding some more elements. So let's go ahead and turn that group on. And you can see that she has added a wooden button and multiple urban threads from sets 10 and 12. And then finally, she has completed her page with the words. And so let's go ahead and add those in. She added in a title and she used the same Remember Word Art from the Remember Word Art mix number two. And the first one has a normal blending mode applied. And then to the copies, she has added a multiply blending mode at 100% opacity. And again, another one at multiply. And if I go ahead and turn those off, you can see that that process serves to increase the intensity and the visibility of the title. You'll also notice too that there's a little bit of dimension on this particular title. If I go ahead and click on this FX symbol, you can see that she's added a drop shadow layer style with a size of five, a distance of three, and opacity of 35. And if I go ahead and turn that off, you can see that we lose that dimension. So it just allows that title to pop off the page a little bit more. I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. And then the final part of this layout was the journaling. And then she also added a levels adjustment layer and this serves to lighten the entire composition. If I go ahead and turn that on and if we double click, you can see the values of that levels overlay. So another great example of how to use the blending modes with the various digital art supplies in both the art play palette and the element sets that come with those collections. Thanks to Laura for sending me her PSD file and allowing me to go through the various layers and show you her process for putting this page together. If you have any questions about the techniques shown today, don't hesitate to contact me. My email address is Anna at AnnaAspinusDesigns.com and I will make sure I add that to the notes below. Have fun playing and I will be back in this space soon with more Photoshop and Elements magic.